Welcome to the Agility in Real Life podcast, Take 5 in Real Life. Now your hosts, my Studeman and Jeff Lee. Hi, and welcome back to the Take 5 IRL podcast. I'm Jeff Lee, a partner at Agility IRL and one of your hosts. And I'm Mike Studeman, the other partner at Agility IRL and your co-host for this podcast. Jeff, I want to start out uh, today with a uh, provocative question. Ooh. What's an agile coach? <laughs> What's an agile coach? Um, yeah, kind of an interesting question because coach is not in the scrum guide, right? Um, and oftentimes we want to have, um, well, in agile self-managing teams, right? And the coach is outside the team. So what's the role there? Uh, we also know that the scrum master, part of what they do is coaching. And so, you know, what I find is that really good teams you know, don't need a coach uh, because the scrum master is doing all of those things. Um, but yeah, what is a coach? A coach is someone who works with a team, helps them to understand, you know, agile concepts, help them, you know, if it's scrum team to understand scrum or other frameworks. So it has a broad knowledge of various frameworks, uh, a lot of tools and techniques to uh, suggest with teams. Uh, and also somebody who does more asking questions than giving answers. Um, yeah, well, couldn't, uh, thoughts, yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, I, I think one of the misunderstandings around the role of an agile coach is, uh, and part of this is driven uh, by Western culture, particularly our view here in the United States of of coach as athletic coach or coach as sports coach. Um, as agile coaches, we're not called to tell the teams or people that we're coaching what to do. Uh, we're not uh, the one saying, you know, drop and give me 20. It's mm -hmm. more uh, asking probing questions, helping them to really own uh, the solution that they want to invest into their problems versus telling them the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know we like to use the phrase, uh, we help organizations to own their own agility. Um, if anybody listening to this is is a parent, um, you know, you you know that your kids take commitments uh, more seriously when they make them versus when you make them, you know, or make a decision on what they want to do. And they learn that maybe I made, you know, it wasn't the greatest idea to come out here without a code on. Um, and they're going to make a different decision next time. But if we're always making the decisions as a parent or a coach, right, people aren't really learning from it. Uh, we learn more from our failures than we do from uh, being told what to do and having it work well. Yeah, I think the parenting analogy is a good one, as, as tried as it might be. I mean, we know as parents, our job is to produce potentially releasable adults. <laughs> and and uh, our job as Agile coaches is to produce self-managing teams. And the more that we create dependence upon us uh, as the coach, the less uh, ability those teams have to truly grow into their self-management. So I know one of the things that frustrates a lot of the teams and individuals that we coach is they'll oftentimes say, Jeff, just give us the answer. Mm -hmm. We give them the answer. We're not helping them grow. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we see a lot of comments and different opinions on whether agile coaches are needed. Like I said, they're not in the scrum guide, right? It's not a role in scrum. It's not accountability. Uh, or I should say coaching is an accountability of the scrum master. So why do we need a coach? Well, hopefully you don't. Right. Um, as a coach, I'm, I'm telling you this, I hopefully you don't need a coach because your scrum master, uh, you know, has that that skill set and they are empowered by the organization to do coaching both with the team, but more importantly, outside of the team. What I generally find in organizations is people don't trust their scrum masters. They think they belong in the team and that's where they exist. And so as coaches, you know, outsiders, organizations, sadly, give us more you know, they, they, they pay more attention to what they say than what they listen to their own employees. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the expert syndrome, right? We happen to be from outside the organization. We're oftentimes just saying what uh, an internal scrum master has at least thought, if not said, to multiple people. Uh, and they just don't have the uh, organizational, as you said, empowerment or organizational authority to, to act on uh, that, uh, that recommendation or observation. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the the need for agile coaching is driven by the fact that people just aren't listening to the to the internal coaches, if you will. Yeah. And I think what a good coach will help to do is make is 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 build that bridge, right? So that when that coach leaves, because as an agile coach, 
part of your goal should always be to leave. Um, get the get their organization up and running without the need for that coach and get the leaders in an organization um, listening to their scrum masters in the way that they would listen to an outside, an outside coach. Absolutely. This is actually a good lead into your uh, to your book report, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> you know, reducing dependence is a key uh, attribute of the coaching stance has espoused by. This is your uh, yeah. So so Lisa Atkins, uh, coaching agile teams is a book that I found transformational when I was a scrum master, um, and you know as a scrum master coming into it, I I was really good at teaching. That was one of the scrum master stances that I was really good at teaching people how to do things, teaching some techniques. I wasn't great at asking questions in doing the coaching side of things. Uh, so Lisa Atkins book kind of opened my eyes to that. Like a good coach is not giving answers so much like we mentioned before, right. Is, is getting others to decide what to do, asking those, those probing questions. And um, you know, that's a, a terrible oversimplification of the knowledge in that book, but definitely encourage scrum masters to check that out. Yeah. Great book. Uh, the seminal book in the space. Uh, if you ever have an opportunity to not only read the book, do so but also see uh, uh, Lisa speak uh, either online or in person, a great speaker, uh, wealth of knowledge uh, in uh, more broadly the agile space, but more specifically the coaching space. Fantastic. Well, I think we've covered the topic of, of agile coaching. Uh, feel free to you know hit us with some questions here in the comments as well. If there are things we didn't address that you think you'd uh, like us to, uh, we can provide a quick answer maybe, or maybe it's a reason for a future five minute conversation. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. Have a good one. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Take 5 IRL podcast. If you like it, please go ahead and share it with someone, as well as like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Also, leave us a comment or a suggestion for a future episode. Again, thanks for listening, and we look forward to you joining us next time on the Take 5 IRL podcast.